The story about Indian coffee is incomplete without talking about the monsoon Malabar coffee. And this is where it all started, the Malabar coast. Back in the 1800s, the British exported a lot of coffee from India. They loaded the naturally processed coffee, which was the most prevalent processing method back then, into wooden crates and loaded them onto the ships and shipped them off to the west, mostly the UK, in small ships during the monsooning season. The beans ended up taking in all of the salty seawater uh, that was in the air and it, sw it swelled up and became pale in color. Well, the British roasters didn't want to throw this away once they received the coffees. So they ended up roasting it and serving it to their guests. And the guests loved it because of the flavor profile it had developed, which is called umami. This accidental discovery now is replicated in cutting edge uh, facilities on the Malabar coast, replicating the same things that used to happen out in the sea back in the 1800s. I am Suhas Dwarkanath, a coffee connoisseur, trainer and a brewer. I have worked hard to bring coffee culture to India and train the next generation of coffee professionals. And I am taking a trip with Hyundai to discover some of the places that are at the heart of coffee culture in India. Today, I'm traveling from the Malabar coast in Western India all the way to Wainat, a journey of over 250 kilometers. Wainat is a hilly district in the state of Kerala that is the oldest spice growing region in the country. The spice trade from this region flourished under the patronage of the ancient rulers of this land, which eventually attracted the intrigue of Western traders. In a way, the journey of colonial rule in India began in these very hills, when the first Western explorers landed in Calicut. Nestled in the heart of Western Ghats, this region gets a lot of rainfall, making the journey even more memorable. That was a long ride. <laughs> the plantations in this region are known to be hundreds of years old. They grow spices like turmeric, pepper, clove and cardamom. These were some of the most traded commodities in the ancient Silk Road. And at some point, coffee was being grown here as well. The coffees in this region are known to have a unique flavor profile. And I'm here for the next few days exploring these. The plantations in this region date back to the colonial era. And the coffee and spice cultivation even earlier than that. Massive colonial bungalows dot the sprawling landscape as a reminder of their age. I'm meeting with Priyam, the owner of Kotamala Plantation, where his family has been growing coffee and spices for generations. So what would you say is so special about coffee of this region? Coffee has a speciality where it will absorb the taste of the particular content whatever is available. You can see uh, in between pepper plant or uh, some spices. So we have a tinge of pepper in coffee. So because of the spices grown in the yes. region, yes. all of the coffees here uh, yes. tend to have spicy tasting yes. notes. Yes. Uh, whatever spices is being cultivated within coffee, there will be a tinge of that particular spice in coffee. Coffee in Kerala is known for its spicy tasting notes. Coffee here is grown alongside spices uh, in the spice farms that are 100 years old. Predominantly, you would find turmeric, clove, 
pepper and cardamom in these spice farms. Most people think that the flavor transfers from the spices to the coffee happen through the soil, but that's not the case. It mostly happens because of the microorganisms that are present on the spices right here. During the harvest season, the microorganisms migrate onto the coffee cherries because of the wind and other reasons, and then start breaking down carbohydrates and sugars that are present in the coffee cherries, eventually giving out the same tasting notes that you would find in these spices. So that's how you get the spicy tasting notes in coffees in this region. Besides coffee and spice plantations, Wynard has a lot more to offer. Because of this terrain, wet climate and altitude, the forests here are lush and this region has an ancient history of trade and indigenous culture. The Edical Caves are located to the south of Wynard, near the ancient trade route connecting the high mountains of Mysore and the Malabar coast. Inside these caves, there are Neolithic pictorial writings that date to at least 6000 BCE. It's humbling to walk the path of our ancestors in this rich historical land. Next, I'm headed deeper into the Western Ghats to Kurg to experience how nature thrives alongside coffee plantations.